Well, here I am, yet again, recording during an oncoming hurricane. But in honor of the world turning upside down today, I'm going to take a second to take a break from our normal web animation content and talk a little bit about TypeScript. Now, I've seen a million different TypeScript tips over time across Twitter and YouTube and stuff, um, but honestly, most of them feel like they're really only useful for like framework authors or library authors, or people doing something very, very specific. That's why today I just want to talk about things that I actually use in my day-to-day, nine-to-five job work. As always, I don't take any sponsors or anything on this channel, but I do run a website called Hover.dev. It is an animated UI library for React, Tailwind CSS, and Frame or Motion. If that sounds interesting, won't talk about it anymore, but there will be a link in the description. But let's go ahead and look at some code. So for tip number one, we have partial, pick, omit, and required. Now, all of these are pretty self-explanatory, I think, from the name. So we can first take a look at this example, and then I'll talk a little bit about maybe when I would use something like this. So up here, I have an interface, which just has three different keys, key one, two, and three, with different types, and the third one is optional. And just kind of going down the line here. First, we have partial, and what partial is going to do is it's just going to take in kind of a generic type, and and then it's going to make everything on there optional. So if we look at partial props here, now not just key three is optional, but key two and one are also optional. Pick just allows you to pick any specific keys. So for instance, here we're just picking key one and three, and that gives us back a type that no longer has key two on. Omit, as it sounds, is the exact inverse of that. So just for this, maybe we just want to omit key three, like so. Now we just have key one and two. And then finally, we have required, which as it sounds, will just make everything required. So maybe we have somewhere else where we're using this, and key three is no longer supposed to be optional. We actually need to make sure it's there. Now, one case where I like to use this relatively often is something like if I'm working in React, maybe I have prop types that I am, you know, defining for the actual prop that the component can take in. And then maybe I have a function which takes in some subset of those props. Well, in that case, I can do something like a pick or an omit, and that will just allow me to not have to rewrite types over and over again. Moving on to tip number two, we have read only, which is pretty self-explanatory. Often I will have a case where I have some constant that should not actually ever be changed. Maybe we have some list of amounts that get rendered as cards on the screen or something like that. And what we can do is we can define those as read only. So I have this type called amounts read only number array. And we'll see now that if I actually try and push onto this, we're going to get an error back saying property push does not exist on type read only number. For tip number three, we have as const. I'm actually going to remove it right here really quick so we can kind of see how this works. So again, maybe I have some kind of enum or something like that that I'm defining like here for colors. And if we look at the definition for this, it's just going to give us red, blue, and green. And each of these are type strings string, not the actual type of the string that's being passed in here. So not like red, blue, green. And if I hit that with an as const, it's going to infer the literal values for all those types. So if I look at the types now, we're going to see it's read only red, read only blue, read only green. And as you may be able to kind of tell from reading that, you can actually use this similar to read only like we were looking at up here. So I could define, you know, amounts as a list that's read only or as const, and it's going to give us these exact values, but it's also not going to let us do like a push onto the list. So it can also be used for cases like that. And there are a bunch of other cool things you can do for this. I have linked a video here to a guy named Matt Pocock. Matt is fantastic for all things TypeScript, and he goes into way better depth and some of the cool things that you can do with as const than I could ever do. So go and check out that video if you want to learn about more about as const. For number four, we have index signatures. And for this, it's often the case that I'll have a object that maybe looks something like what we have down here. So maybe I have invoice IDs, and I want to actually map those to statuses. Maybe I have users that could be either in or out of a room or something like that. And I store those inside of some kind of object. Well, what I can actually do up here, I just have this enum that kind of defines the different possible types. And then the interface that I'm going to define for this object, I can actually just key the, or type the key rather, just as any ID string. So any key that is just a string, and that should just map to some kind of invoice status. So in this case, the key can be anything, but the actual value is going to have to be one of these invoice statuses. So we'll see here, if I hover over invoice three, something else is not assignable to type invoice status as defined up here. And last but not least, we just have literal types. A literal type is useful whenever you want to enforce a specific value for some kind of variable or some kind of parameter. So instead of having my process invoices just take in some kind of string, which then if I were to pass in a string like something else, well, that's not actually going to map to whatever the kind of invoice status is. So we can actually just define that using these pipe syntax like this. So a status has to be any of these values. And now we're only actually going to be able to pass in one of those specific strings. Now that's all that I've got for today, guys. If you got anything out of this, I would massively appreciate a like and a subscribe. Check out my website in the description. Also check out the link to Matt that I referenced earlier. He's fantastic. I learned a lot about TypeScript from him. But uh, beyond that, I will see you guys next time. Peace.